Pilot sends a message back to the Department of Genie Creators. They are here like always, the crazy ones. Leader Entity replies. Ignore them. Pilot carrying fallen spirits speaks to his team back in the lower astral world. Well, well, I see deliver here. The traders have a drop. Pilot gets an order from his superiors in the lower astral world. Stay close to them. We might get an opportunity. Noted, sir. Spiritual engine carrying Elizabeth's spirit crosses the satellite balloons in the Earth's atmosphere. Pilot carrying Elizabeth's spirit speaks to his team. The moon is available for natural GPS, but they use balloons to attach their spy cameras that they call satellites within the Earth's atmosphere. And yet they tell their people on Earth that the satellites are out of space. One member of the pilot's team replies, Well, that's why NASA is a 40 billion industry paid to maintain the Matrix, a fabricated reality. I actually enjoyed that movie. I would have enjoyed more if Will Smith played the role of Neo. 
Gentlemen, focus. Pilot replies. Sorry, sir. Tracking location of Mrs. Miriam. She's by her garden behind the house with Helen. On it. There is a race of spiritual engines towards Mrs. Miriam's backyard. mind so today is class number 10 black people's hatred of our god sent leaders we're going to use two examples to explain the problem that we have as africans you know it's it's because of how much colonization has damaged our mind we have a very difficult uh, position when it comes to being led by people that look like us we support them less we believe in them but when it's already too late you know, we don't protect our own. The best protection that you can have is your neighbor, not a gun. The best protection that you can do is to be your brother's keeper. We have lost this mindset. It is because of colonization. They have damaged our mind. But how can we have this kind of conversation so we can be a new model of Africa by being our brother's keeper? If you look at this image, 21 presidents have been assassinated by France since it's been 50 years. Some of them were murdered because they conspired with the enemies. And you know, the enemies always get rid of you when, when, when they don't need you anymore. Some of them were murdered because the ideas were so revolutionary and they were a threat. If they let them stay alive, they'll definitely uh, uh, liberate African. But some of them were murdered because we ourselves did not give them the support that they needed. You know, today I'm speaking to you. You never know if I'm being targeted. But our court, you never know if he's being targeted. Queen, Am Queen, Queen, Queen Amalia, you never know if she's being targeted. But anybody that stands bold to liberate African people, especially mentally, is always targeted by the top 1%. Welcome, Michael, from Tanzania. Thank you for joining us. Miss Eureka in Canada, thank you for joining us. Frank Menga in Tanzania, thank you for joining us. Mr. Frederick, thank you for joining us. And Brother Jesse, and also Queen Amalia. So um, I'd like us to spend 15 minutes on this. Uh, I'd like to get your input on what you think. And let's start basically with um, Brother, Brother Kot. Uh, what are your thoughts? Uh, uh, is it, uh, what is the problem that uh, we as uh, African people do not really uh, give the support that is needed to our own leaders. You know, we either support them too late. Or what is going on with our court? What are your thoughts on this? And then we can have uh, uh, Mr. Eureka and well, also Queen Amalia. Yes, what are our court? Uh, briefly, I would uh, add my opinion uh, to the already uh, uh, explanation that is happening. You know, one of the things that uh, we Africans do not support our leaders, you know, that really represent our African uh, values and our African perspective is that people are being brainwashed. And once your mind is actually uh, brainwashed, you are actually brainwashed to do things in the aspect of the Western world. Look at the leaders uh, that you have actually shown here, and it's actually heartbreaking if these leaders have actually lived out of this very moment. Africa would have been very different. Look at uh, Libya itself, you know. Libyans were actually made to believe that Gaddafi was the problem, yet it was the Western perspective, you know, Gaddafi wasn't the problem. It just to eliminate the, the African leader that was actually delivering the service to the African people, they were meant to be brainwashed, and that's what happened in Libya. That's what happened also uh, to Soma Tankara. Another leader is Kwame Kuruma, you know, it is a tactic uh, being deployed by the West, and it's actually the work of the brain, because if you control the mind, you control the body. And if Africans are uh, being controlled by outsiders, that is the Western people, it will be really hard to support our leaders because your ideas are being manipulated. And once your ideas are manipulated, you are made to believe that the leaders that are actually truly representing Africa are not true leaders. But the puppets that are being sent by the West, you know, you are made to believe that these are the right leaders and this is what has been happening. So uh, basically, I would say it is the mind control uh, that has actually been happening in Africa. Uh, we do not support our leaders because we are made to believe that these leaders do not represent us. And in actual sense, these are the leaders that represent us. So basically, Brother Avi and the Zola Bantu fraternity, it is uh, very important that uh, we look at what is good for Africa. 
basically and that is what we are doing uh, decolonizing the mind uh, you know what you are doing if you know what you are doing it would be very hard for you to be misled because you know already what leader you do really want so looking at the leaders that we have lost so this could be an important start for us you know to look at the leaders it is not about what they say it is about what we see and what these leaders do if these leaders actually uh, are doing what our african conscience really want then why not to support them so basically the reason why people don't support our our leaders uh, it's because in my own opinion people have been brainwashed and it is very hard for people you know to who have been brainwashed to think independently and make an independent decision so brother Avi, that's what i can make as per very Thank very you. very powerful point brother kot let's have miss yureka miss yureka what are your thoughts queen yureka yes queen yureka are you there okay let's have queen amani queen amalia queen amalia what are your thoughts you're going you're going to mute your your mic shalom shalom you know shalom. first of all i want to say how grateful i am for this class and for the whatsapp chat and just for the constant i can't keep up with everything but i keep up as best i can and you know it's interesting because what our brother akot just said and what you said previously I think that um the the part about the spiritual nature you know mm. by us being severed from our spiritual nature because of the the traumatization that we've been through that's part of the problem mm. you know so if you because once we start to tap into our spiritual nature which is our innate our our innate gifts that everybody's gifted everybody's got some kind of gift mm. that they're here to share with the universe so but you don't necessarily think that because you got to extricate yourself from the brainwashing of that system so it's interesting because i you know i'm a part of the hebrew israelites african hebrew israelites at jerusalem Ben Ami was visited by an angel in 1966. He said it's time to leave America and go to the promised land. So he followed that through without much instruction. But in the meantime, he was knowledgeable enough and cognizant enough to know some certain things. And that was the fact that the way we were inundated with hatred in America, there had to be a better life spiritually physically and otherwise so what this is what i attribute to ben ami one he wrote that book called god the black man in truth so mm-hmm. you were talking about the messengers being he decoded the bible for us because the parables of yeshua and the whole bible thing didn't relate to us any and we just kind of shut down because it was just white folks and negligees mhm wings and all okay so we're not associated with that well he cut through all of that and said he put it in perspective very much like you did arvi but then when i came here to israel in 1984 this community one allows for more than one wife mm. two okay and in doing that one lo- allows for more than one wife Okay so the thing about promiscuity or adultery or you know men are just loose and you know the whole psyche about men having baby mamas all over the place well it it was able to order that put it back in the proper order right and by by him wrapping his mind and the community wrapping their mind around the concept of polygyny then the western world could not castrate us because we're not monogamous. Mm. We out of their field. We in another league altogether. They can't they can't they can't degrade us because monogamy that's their business. And monogamy as it was our brothers often were were untrue to monogamy 
right? Mm. So now you remove that, okay? Because remember Martin Luther King, as well as Elijah Muhammad, which is my ancestry coming from Babylon, America. So I'm sure it's other places, but remember they went at both of them because of infidelity. Mm. So they said, right? But um, in Islam, there was already more than one wife practiced. Mm. So, you know, Elijah Muhammad, he had his ways of dealing with that. Okay, so King, I don't know if they ever proved it or whatever, but, you know, they still sling that around about him and Coretta, you know, being rising above, above the rest and all of that. That's one. Two, they utilized the tapping wiretapping to destroy and undermine the movement. Mm. So when I came here in 1984, Benami, our community had one telephone that had a telephone operator. We had 24 hour around the clock, somebody manned the phone. Mm. So guess what you've, you've eliminated? Wiretapping or or loose lips on the telephone. Mm. Let's put it like that, because some people, if you're tapping wires, people are giving information unbeknownst to them or maybe beknownst to them. Mm. So they use that information. Who are the CIA, FBI, and Mossad, and all the rest do? They use the people's loose lips to destroy and undermine a movement. Mm. And three, we did not use television. We had one television. And, the, and of course, we didn't have these cell phones. Everybody's got this in their mind, my hands right now. But just imagine the ability to go insular then. We didn't have advertisements. I didn't have to look at white women being my model. Hmm. And all the different shades of our people and our kind of hair, our afros, and no, accept who you are. You have a glorious and rich. And so then we were able to equip our population with some sense of being. But when you're in a world that seems dominated by white folks, who wouldn't want to join the team? <laughs> Thank you so much for that. Wow. Sweet. That's it. Thank you so much for those three points. Well, that's really, really profound. Um, what are your thoughts, um, Brother Frank Minga? And then we'll have Brother Frederick. Brother Frank. Hello. Yes, Brother Frank. Uh, on my side, uh, what I can say is that uh, everything is starting from spirit. Okay. Uh, failure or success is starting from uh, spiritual. So even even when you come to our readers, uh, particularly I can take an example here in Tanzania, we had uh, Joseph Kome Makufuli. He was the mm -hmm. man of spirit. Hello, hello. Mm -hmm. Yes, he was the man of spirit. He was the man who carried the uh, the dream of Africa, and it. The enforcing uh, the one thing which was pushing every step it was spirit. So the moment he had the moment of having the spirit is where uh, we realized that uh, Joseph Pom Makufuli he faced a lot of challenges and a lot of uh, uh, a lot of enemies. Why? Mm. Because the enemies realized that. The, my, Makufuli is carrying the speed which is going to uh, to is carrying the the we call it the is going to just to liberate other people. Mm. So in order to limit, in order to 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 cut off, to make sure that this speed does not uh, bring a uh, great impact to the Africa. So that's why you can see that. Uh, uh, the reader who carried the spirit, uh, especially the 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 spirit which carried the freedom for many people, they always faced with uh, uh, difficulties. They 
face with uh, many enemies, as I, I can just, uh, as I take an example here in Tanzania. So, wow, thank speed, you so much. Everything started from speech. That's all. Everything that's starts from the speech. Wow, thank you so much yeah. for that, brother Frank Menga. Okay, but thank, you. thank you. But Frederick, what are your thoughts? Let's keep the contributions uh, two minutes max so we can have everybody to share. But Frederick, uh, what are your thoughts, Brother Frederick? Greetings, brothers. Greetings, classmates. Welcome. Welcome. Yeah, thanks to the most high creator of all the creation. You know, the only one worthy of worship. Uh, my uh, opinion uh, about the leadership, uh, once again, from the research and uh, things that have been done, uh, the majority of them doesn't have a, a real true foundation of their spirituality. And mm. what I mean by that, they don't, they don't uh, let the creator live in their life truly every day. We say it, but we don't show it in our actions. And what I mean by that, here it is, we'll get up there and say, yeah, we love God, thank God for this, and then in the next, next minute we go around and, you know, do something bad to a person. Mm-hmm. And that takes away from our trueness of being a a, a warrior for the creator. And uh, once once our people realize that our spirit controls everything in his body, mm-hmm. it, there's there's nothing our body cannot do, our minds cannot do. Mm-hmm. I understand what people are saying about our minds. And yes, it is. Because a weak mind will destroy any type of movement because this person mm-hmm. is not on the court with everybody else. And basically, until we get our spirituality back, our our core foundation, and I truly believe this is our foundation that we need to fix before mm-hmm. we fix any physical thing in this society. Because everything starts on the spiritual side. Even our thoughts, before mm-hmm. we even speak, we didn't thought about what we speaking. Did anybody hear that speak? That was a thought in the spiritual realm. Mm-hmm. Then we invested it when we spoke it through our lips. If people start to understand that, we'll start to understand how, ooh, how powerful we are wow. as a people. You powerful. Know? powerful. That's, that's, that's basically how, what I feel about the leadership and how, how they have been betrayed, you know, because they, our leadership did not stand on the foundation of our spirituality mm-hmm. of being connected with the Most High. Thank you, Avi. Powerful, powerful, brother Frederick, for that. Uh, if we can have um, brother Jesse, brother Jesse, what are your thoughts before we move into uh, our session for today, brother Jesse? Yeah. Yeah. Hello. Why, why, why don't we support our own leaders? Hmm? Uh, in my opinion, this is uh, the result of uh, colonization. Because at the, at the end of the day, it's not just a physical thing, but also mental thing and spiritual thing. So mm-hmm. colonization create, instituted a system that is not is really still remaining in Africa. So it creates a way of thinking of the people in Africa that doesn't allow us to support uh, our leaders. Mm-hmm. So basically, the system that remains after colonization is still there and is still affecting us every day. So we need to re, uh, re-educate ourselves and we start to realize and understand that we've been, still be, uh, we've been manipulated by the colonizers to, to this day. Wow. Thank you so much for that, brother Jesse. That's very, very very, very important, crucial point. Uh, Sister Eureka, you there? Yes, my brother, I'm here. Sorry, I, I was having some connection issues. Yeah, what are your thoughts, Queen Eureka? Um, it's just, I, I, I feel so sad that our, our leaders, every time they rise up, you know, we lose them, and I'm I'm just, I feel like it discourages some other young men, um, you know, to step up from the conversations that I've been having with young men around me. Mm. And so um, it's just, 
I guess mm. no one is is a prophet in their own land, right? Mm. So it's but I'm hopefully with with learning more about them, seeing their courages, we will change our hearts. You know, um, mm. we'll we'll see how it goes. Wow, powerful, Queen Yurika. That's beautiful. And I can see Michael does not need to have your video on. You can just put on your mic and contribute. Michael, you, you like to jump in right there? You can just unmute your mic, Michael. Okay. Wow, well, brother Michael joins us. Uh, brother Zivai, Chisike, what are your thoughts? Thank you for joining us, brother Zivai. Oh, thank you very much, uh, Brother Avi. Um, yes, Brother uh, Zivai. Every time someone rises up to free black people, next thing you know, they are rotating in the grave. Yeah, I, I think it's quite a big challenge because um, for me, um, I think it's uh, it's more about the information that we have um, at our disposal because um, our decisions are based on the information we have. Mm. So most of the information we have is uh, painting such leaders as something else. Or then we tend to justify uh, whatever happens to them and we tend to understand why it should happen the way it it would have happened because somehow we um we feel we are fed with information that uh informs us that uh, they are a menace to society in a way so i, I think um uh, uh, it's the issue of education, not just education, but mass education, because it's a numbers thing. Mm -hmm. um, there are some who may understand, but because they are, which means their their influence mm -hmm. is not much. So that's why there isn't so much understanding of the of the critical role played by these people being assassinated and stuff. So I think, yeah, it's it's mass deception, uh, if I may call it. Yeah, mm, deception. Very powerful, brothers. If I, Mr. Ndai, what are your thoughts before we jump into our session? Yes, am I audible? Yes. Well, um, I agree with the contributions that um, the other queens and kings made. And in my opinion, I believe that the reason why we support um, our leaders after they're gone instead of when they're still around is because of alienation mm. we have been like the colonial mindset we have been brainwashed to believe that anything that the i don't know whether i, should, I wouldn't necessarily say the white man but that the colonizer says or the westerners say let me say that the westerners say is correct you know um, they're the leading nations they make the big decisions. Um, we follow them. It's like, for example, when um, when someone in the West discovers um, a cure for a certain virus or something, we believe them. But if someone in our own community finds it, we brush it off. Like, you know, we don't support them. We brush it off. Um, and that has actually happened before with a certain doctor. I don't remember the name, but yes, you know, that's an example. So... And I believe that the core of it is that they brainwashed us to not be able to love ourselves, um, to think that every, there's everything wrong with us. And I believe that if we cannot love ourselves, there's no way we can love our next brother or sister, the mm. one next to us. And we cannot look up to them because we fail to look up to ourselves. We also look down on, like, if you look down on yourself as an African, as a Black person, how are you going to look up to your brother? or sister who's leading you in the government or as the president or something. So, yes, that's what I think. Thank you. Wow. Thank you so much for your contributions, everybody. That's absolutely amazing. I think we'll have Brother Makumbuli a little bit later for joining us. Thank you for joining us, Brother Makumbuli in Zambia. My dear brothers and sisters, you know, uh, in truth, we came into this world so we can be able to study the universe. Okay. We are students. Life on earth, it is an experience. It's an internship. 
okay? So we came here to study the universe. It is by observing nature that you'll be able to understand how the creator functions. Okay, it is not by belief of dogmas and precepts, no. Okay, we don't believe in our creator. We know our creator exists. It is knowledge. Belief is faith. You don't believe, you don't believe a car exists. No, you know a car exists. You know, so we have to move away from that thought because we came into the universe to study and understand the universe. You know, we came here to be able to understand how the universe functions. It's an internship. You know, so we can be able to use the natural environment and, um, and use it as a practice in our lives, in our relations, and also in the construction of our social structures in our countries on how we're going to govern our nations. So we can be able to show ourselves as the people, the Bantu people, the Israelites, the Hebrews. You know, our ancestors say, say that we are the Bantu. Uh, the, we are the people whose head then too. Why are we Bantus? Because then two is the head. Our head functions. We are wise people. We are intellectual people. You know? So we need to function well so we can be able to, at the end, enjoy and participate in this joyous aroma. This whole experience of life is something that we have to enjoy. When you're doing an internship, it doesn't mean you have to become a prisoner in the company. No, you have to enjoy the experience at the same time when you are learning you know, from the beings of nature, we have uh, the beings of nature that exist with us, but they are of a different dimension that we cannot see them. But they are available if you raise your vibration, you can be able to communicate with them. That the Christians call the army of the Lord, but confuse them to be angels. So, we, so it, our role here is to be able to take possession of the universe. But for 6,000 years, we have lost that control of the physical kingdom because, like how Brother Frank says, we lost that spiritual touch. You know, where Frederick says we lose, we lost that spiritual touch with our creator, and therefore we even lost the physical kingdom to a few individuals that are enjoying life at the moment. So, children of Africa, let's let me try to use historical proof to explain our problem. You know, one of our leaders as Bantu people, as Israelites, as Hebrews, was Moses, you know, known as Moses. In the translated scriptures, but his name was Masa, meaning water in Kikongo, or Moshe. You know, when the creator appeared, you know, in a dream, an intuition to Moses to help to go ahead and liberate the children of Israelites out of Egypt. They were having such a difficult time in Egypt, you know, because uh, there was a time when the children of God were in so much pain in Egypt. Because they were being enslaved. Remember I told you that the Egyptians were black people. Even the Israelites were black people. They were living in Egypt. But later on when the death of Pharaoh Kenatu happened, a new Pharaoh from Babylonian came as a Pharaoh in Egypt. He began to mistreat the people that were not obeying his orders. And this included the children of Israel. He put them into a hard labor of slavery. And they were basically forced into slavery. So when these people were basically suffering, they began to pray. The Bible says pray, but they began to send out their thoughts and their energies to the creator to be able to find a way to get them out of that pain, you know. So whatever you release as words, it is energy. And when energy of the same frequency are released by a group of people, they combine to form an egregore. We shall speak one day what is an egregore. An egregore is a large group of thoughts, you know? So when you combine your thoughts, when you agree on something, you're releasing an energy. And that energy can rise up, even up to the spiritual kingdom to be able to respond to the cause. So the cry of the children of Israel, the Bantu people daily of being mistreated by the, 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 the occupiers, the Egyptians of the day, who basically, uh, basically infiltrated Egypt and took over power, their egregor became very large up to the point where the, it reached up to the creator. And then the creator basically came and appeared to Moses and said, you have to go and help and take my people out of Egypt. So what did the creator do? He took one among them, Moses. Remember, he was put into the water in a basket and was received by the 
the princess of one of the the princess of Egypt by by the time. So Moses was taken away from his people. He grew up in the palace of Pharaoh, and he was being fed, and he was he was profiting from the from the enslavement of his own people. So he was taken by a Pharaoh who is enslaving his own people. And they were feeding him and taking care of his education. He was learning in Egypt, in the house of the Pharaoh, from the taxes of his own people that were being enslaved. You know, So, my dear brothers and sisters, it came the certain time when Moses gained the conscience. He said, no, things cannot continue to function like this. He gained the conscience. He began to do certain activities, some sort of a rebellion, you know, to the order of the day of enslaving the Israelites. You know what happened? Yeah. The story said that Moses killed one of the gods and then he ran away from Egypt. So when Pharaoh heard that Moses uh, basically had killed uh, one of the, 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 the gods, he ordered Moses to be killed, but Moses ran away. In the scriptures, it says that Moses ran away and then he went through the desert. 40 years of formation, he was being trained so he can come and set his people free. So Moses is in the desert. He runs away. He spends 40 years. He's being formed. He's being trained by the creator, the most high, to come and liberate the people out of Egypt. So when he came now to liberate the people out of Egypt, he was facing a lot of calamities. A lot of problems was happening between him and Pharaoh. The negotiation was not working. And you remember the, there, was a, there were so many plagues that Moses performed in Egypt to be able to help the people to move out. So, he meet, so when Moses began to you know, indulge in these activities of setting his people free, he even saw that uh, things became a bit difficult. The way that God had told him that, okay, you're going to go in there and you know, get them out, things became a bit difficult, my dear brothers and sisters. So, worst of all, when Moses was liberating his own people from Egypt <laughs> and he took them out and they were going towards the desert, they were facing so many problems up to the point where his own people that he came to liberate began to say, ah, we were well in Egypt, you came and you have made us enter into pain. So, his own people began to oppose him. They got mad at him at a point where they even wanted to replace him. They even wanted to choose a different leader to go back to Egypt. And Moses, at one particular time, you remember, he said something that basically did not uh, uh, please the Lord. And then he did not even make it into Canaan, Congo. But Moses being our leader, centuries after, when we entered into Canaan, we began to sing, Moses was a great man. Moses was this. But when, we, or when he was with us, we criticized him. We insulted him. We blamed him. But centuries after, we were liberated by Moses. Moses is the greatest man alive. Moses is whatever. Let's move on to the second example. That was for Moses. Master Yeshua came into the world. He was a man among his people. But when the leaders of the day began to notice that the message that he was teaching was full of love, full of purity and justice, and it was exposing the pretentious leaders of the day, like the Pharisees and the Sadducees, they planned on killing him. Brothers and sisters, I'm going to spare you, we're going to spare you all the details, but we'll try to lay out one scenario. There was a time when um, there, there was a choice between Master Yeshua and, and a man named Barabbas. Hmm? If you know of Barabbas, <laughs> there, was a name, there was a man by the name of Barabbas, an incredible thief. He was stealing from the children of Israel. He was stealing from the Bantu people. Every time he... he Pilate sends a message back to the Department of Genie Creators. They are here like always, the crazy ones. Leader Entity replies. Ignore them. Pilate carrying fallen spirits speaks to his team back in the lower astral world. Well, well, I see delivery here. The traitors have a drop. Pilate gets an order from his superiors in the lower astral world. Stay close to them. We might get an opportunity. Noted, sir. Spiritual engine carrying Elizabeth's spirit crosses the satellite balloons in the Earth's atmosphere. Pilate carrying Elizabeth's spirit speaks to his team. 
The moon is available for natural GPS, but they use balloons to attach their spy cameras that they call satellites within the Earth's atmosphere. And yet they tell their people on Earth that the satellites are out of space. One member of the pilot's team replies, Well, that's why NASA is a 40 billion industry, paid to maintain the matrix, a fabricated reality. I actually enjoyed that movie. I would have enjoyed more if Will Smith played the role of Neo. Gentlemen, focus. Pilot replies, Sorry, sir. Tracking location of Mrs. Miriam. She's by her garden behind the house with Helen. On it. There is a race of spiritual engines towards Mrs. Miriam's backyard. He has an opportunity, he will go and steal people's stuff. And he was arrested. So a foreigner pilot, by the way, a Roman, came and asked the children of Israel, the one who's giving you the message of love, the message of purity, he has never stolen from you. I think in the feast of the Passover, let us free one of them. There were two prisoners, Master Yeshua and Barabbas. The one who is teaching you the word of God, teaching you about love and everything, he has done you no wrong. So let's try to free him from prison. You know, my dear brothers and sisters, Master Yeshua was never loved. Huh? All the rubbish that we see in cinema and, and the TV, those are tricks of cinema. He was a person who, at a particular moment, he was in, 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 in loneliness in the desert for three years. Hmm? They've given us dogmas and precepts that he was basically fine and everybody loved him. No, the man suffered through his life and his ministry. He was doing, he was not popular. Even if you read the prophecies, it is written that they never noticed or gave him much attention. Isaiah 53.3. He was despised and rejected by mankind. A man of suffering. Hmm? A man of pain. Master Yeshua. So, the children of Israel said, ah, free Barabbas, the one who's killing us. So we chose a thief over a person who was teaching us the way to the Father. But Master Yeshua, who was basically trying to teach us and opposing the laws of men, who was showing us the right way, we said, no, crucify him. Crucify him. Today, centuries after his death, many people today declare him as a hero. Everyone's mouth now is for Master Yeshua. Yesu, he died for me. He's our savior. You keep getting what the Romans have written in the scriptures, not knowing that Master Yeshua was a child of Africa, born in North Africa 2,000 years ago. He came to his own, but his own did not receive him. They kept shouting, crucify him, crucify him. So there's a problem that we have as African people, my dear brothers and sisters, listen very careful, as Bantu people. We have a certain character, whether the Bantu people of today or in the past, you know, when we speak of Israelites, it means the Bantu people. We don't speak of the imposter of Israel today, which is occupying Palestine. Those are Caucasians of Mongolia. We explained this in the previous lecture. So we have a characteristics where we do not accept our own prophets when they are alive. We have this problem. When someone is trying to help us, we try instead to kill them. We try to complicate their life. We try to make their life difficult. If anybody wants to help us, we always oppose them. We never support them. Look at Patrice Lumumba in Congo, for example. When, people, when he died, people popped champagne. People were saying, hi, he was disturbing our relationships with the Belgians. But today in Congo, we built him a statue. Everyone today in Congo is a Lumumbist. The guy died at 35 years old. Imagine if he was still alive to today, if we supported him. If we protected him, Master Yeshua, we are always like that. I'm saying these things because it hurts in my heart being a muntu. We troubled Moses up to the point where he insulted and even was punished. He, he was not able to enter the promised land in Congo. But today, oh, the God of Abraham, the God of Moses, Master Yeshua, that people call Jesus today, we troubled him. Even to the point of offering, to offering him to the Romans and he was, he was assassinated. He was killed because 
we did not protect our brother. So we have a problem, my dear brothers and sisters of Africa. Mm -hmm. Because we think today, because you went to Western schools and you are educated, you speak English and French, uh, you think that because you have, you have arrived at, at, at knowledge, all this Western civilization is absolutely nonsense. You know, you think that the paradigm in which we have to fight for our freedom using arms of war and bombs, that is not the paradigm of our ancestors. In our ancestors, we fight with words. We sit and we talk. We use the power of words, not the power of guns and nuclear bombs. We have entered into the schools of whites and I've seen how they have done their revolutions, the French Revolution. You think the same thing will work in Tanzania and Uganda? No, that is not part of the African culture. We are not of the same culture. So we do have a problem, my dear brothers and sisters. We need to recognize, you know, we have to be able to support our own leaders. We have to be able to support the Hebrew nation, for example, in Israel, where Queen Amalia is. We have to be able to support hmm, our brothers and sisters who are in Sudan. You know what happened? They are now divided, Sudan and South Sudan. We were the entire Africa when that was happening. We, Gaddafi was being murdered way with the entire Africa. This was happening. Our brothers and sisters have been taking the ships, going to Italy, dying on the ships. Where are we? Hmm? I hear that even some descendants of slaves in America are so mad at Africans because we never went looking for them. Hmm? Someone comes and takes your, your people as slaves and then you don't go and look for them and bring them back. Yeah. Some of them are mad at us for that. We have to be able to have that. I'm telling you, I live in India, for example. Even if an Indian is wrong, if you have an argument with an Indian and Indians come, they'll support their brother first. They'll support their brother against you. And then when they're done with, the, with you, then they go privately to discipline their brother. It, what does it mean? It teaches us a lot of things. It means if I meet Brother Imakumbuli arguing with somebody, I would support Barayi Makumbuli no matter what, even if he's wrong. And then after that, I would take Barayi Makumbuli in private. I would tell Barayi Makumbuli, you know, I supported you, but you were wrong. You cannot do like this. We need to have that kind of mentality as Africans to support our own before anything else. But we, we easily dance with the enemies, easily. You know, in Congo, we have a problem because... Rwanda is being used by the United States to colonize Congo. And their leader, Kagame, is like a puppet that is being used to infiltrate Congo, create rebels and everything. And the Rwandan women, they are mostly Neolithic. I'm not saying that they are not Africans. They are Africans, but they are Neolithic Africans. Okay, The Bantu gave birth to a Neolithic. Neolithic gave birth to the other races. That is why a Neolithic person can easily betray a Bantu very easily. Mind you, I'm not trying to divide Bantus and Neolithic. I'm just explaining to you that if the Caucasian race wants to destroy the Bantus, they always pass by the Neolithic race easily. In our country, most of our politicians, they, are, they have their wives and Neolithic. And we are so impressed to think that because you have married her, then she's submissive to you. But when it comes to the interest of her people, she can even kill you easily. But a Bantu woman, when she loves a man, she loves the man fully. Even if it's a white woman, a white man, she will give her entire life and heart to her. But that's not the case with other races. Other races, she loves you, yes. But when it comes to choosing her own tribe and her own family and her own culture, she can pack her bags, even put poison in you to destroy you. So, we have, to, we as Bantu people, as African people, we have to stick with each other. Look at some of our leaders, for example, that are not with us today. Marcus Garvey, Malcolm X, Patrice Lumumba, Steve Biko, Nkwame Nkrumah, Toman Sakara, Haile Selassie, Nat Tuna, Muhammad Gaddafi. All oh, these are our leaders. We did not give them the support that they needed. Even today, we have leaders who are alive. They're not dead. They are alive with us now, but we do not support them. Dr. Uma Johnson in the United States, 
the guy has been trying to build the FDMG school up to now he's still raising the money to build the school to help black boys to today but while we have black celebrities in the states millionaires multi-millionaires but for them they cannot support the brother never the brother is struggling even to set up the AC in the FDMG academy we don't support the brother but we are so quick to buy sneakers go to McDonald's watch movies we even line up I remember when Avengers movie was coming out in the United States the movie was coming out at 4 p.m. there was a queue there was a queue for the movie since 4 a.m. People were queuing for the movie since 4 a.m. to enter into the cinema to watch Avengers. Black people were there. I saw the video. So many young people wearing their sneakers, Air Jordans, Nike, Adidas, all allowed, chains in their neck, waiting to watch Avengers, but they cannot support our own. Miss Choma Phillips from African Singing Magazine, doing an amazing work in Kenya. Let's support. Queen Yingong. Hmm? Speaking, you have seen, I'm seeing you've seen Queen Ngong in Nubia. How many of us know her and support her? Chairman Omali, Isaac Mokesa, Hanito Mobayua from the uh, Rapid Africa Plan, Sister Shanice, Professor Lumumba, he keeps speaking and speaking and people, people even condemn him now saying that he speaks a lot, there's no action. But there are some people who are there strategically just to speak. But maybe you, Brother Akot, you can be on the practical side. Okay, how can I put to practice what Pio Lumumba is saying? Because we blame him to say he only teaches, he only speaks. His strength is only to speak. Even in a war, we have the news people who have to work on the propaganda. But the soldiers have to go to war. You see, we don't support him. Mr. Joshua Maponga, many of you know him, farmers of thoughts. We don't support him. He doesn't get the support that he deserves. He's alive. We'll wait when Pio Lumumba is dead. we build him a statue in Kenya. Pio Lumumba was a great man, but now he's alive with us. We're not giving the same support he needs. Dr. Rikana Chombori helping the diasporas. He was even in the African Union. We kicked her out of the African Union because the members were bribed by France. She was kicked and then she went to form the ADDI. How many of us are supporting her in helping the diasporas connect back with Africa? Difficult. Louis Farrakhan, many of you know say Mr. Louis Farrakhan from the Nation of Islam. How many of us support him? So we have a problem, and we have to realize that we do have a problem that we need to solve. Julius Malema, I'm not saying that these people are perfect. No. Many of them have their weaknesses. Many of them have their own demons. But we have to be able to support our own people and put them first. Always, my dear brothers and sisters of Africa. So, coming to the end of our session, here at Zolobantu, we are not saying come to Zolobantu only. Become a member of Zolobantu only. Forget the other organizations. No. This is Zola. It means love. Okay? We are in the strategy of spirituality. If you come to Zolobantu, we will teach you spirituality. If you want to learn about publishing, how to publish your book, please go to Amava Heritage Publishing. Those of you, those of you who are in the United States, if you want your children to learn African education, Kamali Academy has built a system of African education that you can learn from. APSP, African People Socialist Party, they are very strong in teaching about colonization. If you want to learn anything about colonization, go to APSP, become a member, participate. If you want to learn about our African queens, listen to Queen Yengong in Nubia. The path to the return. If you want to learn about organic African paradigm, Mr. Mitri is over there. He can give you so much knowledge on that. If you want to learn about Africa, Rapid Africa Plan, how to reconstruct the economy of Africa, Rapid Africa Plan is there. Singy Africa Magazine is helping in the media. Sister Shanice Show, she has an amazing show happening. Sister Shanice Show, you can listen to her. Africa Unite Voice with Miss Chinere. ADDI with Dr. Ikana Chiombori, Mr. Joshua Maponga, support him as well. 
the Pan African Daily TV with Dr. Susan Tata, very famous. Please support him. And also Dr. Uma Johnson in the Frederick Douglass Marcus Gavi Academy. And also Pio Lumumba. And also the Zolabantu community where you are right now. So we want all our members. Queen Afua, yes. So we want all our members in Zolabantu, those who believe what we do, support these other Africans who are also doing. I'm not saying that everything they do or say you will agree with. But I'm sure you can learn something from them. So we have to reverse. So the part of decolonizing our mind, we have to be able to unite with our people. But, but, a Frank Meng, but a Frank Menga is from Tanzania. He has an amazing organization called Gevacta, Gender Violence Against Africans. That you can support but a Frank Menga as well. So this class today was just to tell you that we have a problem when it comes to supporting our own. I have I have experienced it before. I did an experiment in school where I remember when I was in, in, in the university in India, we had a few African people in our class, combined classes. When the Indians will come to present in front of the class, I'll be there smiling, clapping from there and everything. But when my fellow Africans will go in front to present, I will be ignoring them. I won't even clap for them. But they are, my, they are my own people. So even I can personally recognize that I'm sick because why do I not clap for my own African when he's presenting, but I easily clap for an Indian? We have a problem. Why would I donate to a cause of somebody, but I would not donate to the cause of somebody else? So we have a problem. So we have to recognize that we have a problem as Africans. The colonization mind it was the, the colonization project destroyed us to love ourselves like how Mr. Ndaria said we lack that love for ourselves we need to cultivate the love for ourselves to be able to love our own we do have a problem so this basically will bring me to the end of this uh, uh, contribution on the class to let you know that uh, at Zolobantu we are looking for people classmates that have a love for Africa you know, the European people, the way they are, the French, the Belgium, the, the Germans, the Americans. America is just uh, East, Eastern Europe. Hmm? America, most of American people, like those that settled in America, they came from, from Europe after being chased by the Catholic Church. So that's why they always protect the interests of Europe, because that is where they came from. So they can fight among themselves when it comes to protecting their collective interest. They will come together no matter what. We as Africans, we are divided. Malawi cannot unite with Zambia to fight China. No, Malawi will fight China on its own. Look at the size of China and look at the size of Malawi. Can Malawi and China sit on a negotiating table to negotiate what? Can the U.S. sit with Lesotho to negotiate? To negotiate what? Look at the size of the U.S. and look at the size of Lesotho. And they should both negotiate. That's impossible. It's, 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 it's a failure from the start. But when we stand as Africa, we negotiate with China, we negotiate with the US, look at the force that we have. But our problem is we are not united. And because we are not united, there is a problem. So thank you so much, Brother Court, for joining us as you're leaving. But I want to get a final close from everybody, and then we'll have the end of our session for today. Take this message with you. Start by loving yourself and love your proximity, your family members. Show them love. Overlook their weaknesses. Where they are weak, give them st strength. Uh, coming to that, I would like to have um, Brother Zivai Tisike. Brother Zivai Tisike, um, if you can say a few words before we come to the end of our session. Brother Zivai. Yeah, Brazil, are you there? Okay, let's have Brother Jesse. Yeah, Brother Jesse, you there? Okay, let's have Brother Imakumbuli. Brother Imakumbuli. Yeah. Thank you very much. Welcome, Brother Makumbuli. Yes. 
ya just uh, i think to conclude on everything that you have facilitated i think uh, we need just to to start uh, getting awakened because uh, like you were you were narrating the history it's like the history uh the present uh, it has some common elements you know of of hate of uh brothers assass- assassinating their own brothers so i think it's all about the 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 man himself the spirit he need to awaken because i i don't think someone who who is truly awakened and he has a proper vision of himself or the vision of his people or his nation can mm. bow to external forces mm. you see there's no there's no such a person mm. who, no, who who has awakened to the realization of self knowledge that can bow to any force outside of that which is in in himself you see mm. so i think the the whole the, this whole problem that we have been having all from from time in memorial i think they they start with us i i don't even blame colonizers because now colonizers are no more and we can like right now we can we can access knowledge you know at the tip of our of our nails you see mm. so it's, it's 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 up to the individual the african themselves that we need just to change mm. to seek the highest creator so that by 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 getting you know by getting a fellowship with him then we will be able to make peace with the world you, you, you understand absolutely beautiful thank you so much for that rema kumbuli it's about the spirit profound but uh, frederick what are your thoughts and then we will have uh, queen amalia and then we will have um, but a uh, frank but uh, frederick yes greetings brothers and sisters of the class i mean it's it was just a, a great class unfortunately i came a little late um as the uh, previous brother was saying you know it's it's i mean we as we look at it it is people start to understand it it starts with our spiritual aspect first once we get that down pat or once we get a better connection with the most high he will give us what we need to understand how we need to connect with each other you know telepathically we we know we won't have to talk um and and this is what i truly feel once we get this a little more down pat as you say i'll be the thousand years of peace it would be more than a thousand years brother <laughs> <laughs> absolutely it would be so much more and that's truly and, and i appreciate your class because it's it's heading it's it's giving the kids and i'm saying kids we all go <laughs> with our minds like kids because we're soaking up knowledge right now Uh-huh. and you given us knowledge to understand where our pitfalls were where our pitfalls can be and where we need to you know pay attention to you uh-huh. know especially like with this particular class today about how our leaders have been taken out because i didn't like how he kissed his wife or i didn't like how he told me i should get up and get a job so uh-huh. i decided to turn my back on him you know uh-huh. that's such a selfish I mean selfish selfish attitude and as I've been telling everybody we need to figure out or I I think I like I said I I truly believe once we fall back to the most high won't nobody be able to betray us no absolutely absolutely amazing thank you so much for that uh, thank you Abi <laughs> thank you so much brother Frederick let's have our queen Amalia and then we'll have uh, Miss Eureka and brother Frank and then we'll be having queen tendai as well and then we'll brazify hopefully and then we'll come to the end of our session yes queen amalia 
we need the love. Eh? Brother Frederick says we need the connection with the Creator to be restored, which we are trying to do daily. Queen Amalia. Again, shalom. Uh, shalom. You know, I, I, I said in the chat that I noticed that we're in tandem. The voice that is here that I heard essentially is going in the same direction. And that's a hallelujah. We have to acknowledge that. And also acknowledge you as um, the leader, the director, the navigator, you know, steering us in uh, a direction I've learned so much from, from you just in this hour's worth of time that I really have a greater understanding. We also have to, um, I know for myself, Kwame Nkrumah helped me to navigate through to find the core of me because I, I read his books. I read his books. I never met Kwame Nkrumah, but I had the utmost admiration for him as a leader that was able to um, steer his people to independence mm. in the early, in the mid, the first African country in the early, mid 60s, you know. And so um, find something that you can gravitate to, some, some higher thought, some, some, something that takes you out of your comfort zone and allows you to explore your heaven and, and start to bite off and chew and digest another idea that's making you become a better person. And so I would say that, that that is so key because, again, as everybody said, tap into you, tap into yourself. You know, don't be selfish, but you can't, you got to carry this vessel. This is the only vessel on earth that you have total control of when and if you're in tandem with Yah Yisrael, Yah the Holy One, Yah the Creator. Mm. That's it. Thank you so much for Look that. Look forward Queen. to next time. Thank you. Thank you so much, Queen, for that. You're welcome. Uh, Queen uh, Yureka. Queen, Queen Yureka is also from the Congo, like me. Queen Yureka. Can you hear me? Yes. Yeah, so I just, the way I'm looking at it, I think we need just patience, you know, with the more information we're learning. We're going to. Yeah, get there. Oh, sorry. Mm. We're gonna get there, and it, it, it's gonna take a while. You know, this whole misinformation took, you know, five centuries or so, and we just need patience. You know, as we train our children, we will get there. Absolutely, as we train our children, that's pretty, that's really amazing to say that. Uh, yeah, Queen Tendai, and then we'll have uh, Brazivai. Um, yeah, thank you so much for the session. It was really great, and to hear everyone's contributions as well. Um, I guess I'd just like to say that I hope that um, we learn that self-love, you know, we learn the beauty in our melanin and in our hair, especially for the ladies, um, so that we can also, like, spread it among each other. Thank you. Wow, beautiful. Brazivai, Brazivai Chisike. I think Brother Michael is having a problem with his mic. If you, can, if you can click on the microphone, Brother Mike, and click on Wi Fi. Brazivai. Oh, Brother Jesse. Can you hear me? Yes, Brother Jesse. Brother Jesse is part of our network team. Yes, Brother Jesse. So yeah, today I learned a lot, and yeah, I hope we can, you know, go back and re-educate ourselves in order to appreciate every leader that we have right now and give flowers right now and not when they already done um, this, uh, you know, life. So we can really push them to lead us and help us to the right direction, so we can. 
unite and bring uh, Africa up again. Yeah. Powerful. You know, our next class, next week, we're going to speak about a message to black girls and black women. Such a beautiful lecture. Next class, a message to our black women and black uh, women and, and black girls. It will really be amazing because we're going to speak to our queens just briefly to see how our queens are today and as compared to how our queens basically were back in the days. There are a few things that we can help our queens with. So let's look forward to the next class um, next Sunday. And uh, for those who are part of our Zoraban two um, education project, we are, we're having a meeting, uh, I think, in, in, an, in an hour and a half time just to work on the project. But I really appreciate you all for joining us today. For those who are watching us live on YouTube as well, message is love. The week is coming ahead. Love, everybody. Show love. It doesn't mean if you show someone love, then you should, you should be a punk. No. You have to also have discipline and also you cannot tolerate everything thank you so much michael i uh, will definitely speak to you if you can leave your number or your email in the chat so i can uh, talk to you so we can set up your mic next time for the next class but i want to appreciate everybody for joining us for today's class um, show love to everybody and please look out um, uh, these organizations that you can see on the screen learn more about them support their leaders if you cannot support with funds, you can support with time. Even time is a resource. You can say, okay, uh, but Avi, I cannot give something, but I can give an hour of my time a week. You know, we have a lot of projects working on. So we need people who can give their time. Even time is a resource. So support these people, help them. So we, 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 can, we can all unite and uh, have a united force because we cannot do everything we have different strengths and different capabilities among us we have to use them but in one unity force so all these organizations i am in touch with them i do talk to their leaders uh, i have their phone numbers if you want i can connect you to them you can speak to them you can attend their classes like for example organic african paradigm has amazing classes also mr maponga is back in zimbabwe he's having a lot of classes online as well you can learn from him Let's all contribute and be part of this organization to support them to be able to move our agenda of Africa ahead. Like I said, some of the things they say, you may not agree with them, but at least uh, show them some love and some tolerance as well. So thank you, everybody. Have a beautiful week ahead. It's, um, it's going to be an amazing week. I, I believe so because yeah, has already gone ahead of us. Uh, yeah. In Amalia, yes, Mr. Maponga is our brother. Mr. Maponga is an amazing, amazing leader that we need in this particular century as well. So thank you so much. I'm looking forward to speaking to you all. You can contribute your, your contributions in the in the chat and the WhatsApp group. And uh, do try to uh, go to our YouTube page and check out the session, Taking Back the Bread. See where you can help us with your knowledge in our projects. We cannot just keep talking. We have to now participate and really build systems. I think someone mentioned information. Information is important. You need to have control over your media to be able to control information. You know, I think on YouTube, we, we even have YouTube for kids. But if you check those YouTube for kids, the cartoons over there, they have hidden subliminal messages. You know, so we're talking about having our own cartoons, having our own Disney's, you know, we have to be control of the minds of our people. Because as long as they continue to feed other information, then we're very, very far from that. So we have to build our own systems. You know, I always lose, I always use China as a model because they really control the minds of their children. In China, for example, when it comes to video games, they have special places where kids play video games. Because they know if you spend 14 hours in a day playing Call of Duty, well, it's very destructive, you know, so they have times for playing video games. They focus their children to learn. But if you go to Africa, many parents don't even know what their children are doing in their rooms. They're playing games. They're not focusing on their studies. So we have to take control of the minds of our children. It means we have to educate the parents, which we're doing right now. So all these organizations you see, they are all trying to decolonize the African mind. You can learn one or two things from them. And we hope that um, you can take some time during the week and visit their websites and see what they're doing, if it, it's an affinity, what you believe as well. So thank you, everybody. Have a beautiful Sunday and uh, see you next week. May the most high be with all of you. Uh,
Uh, thank you so much, uh, Ms. Tendai, Ms. Yureka, Mr. Makumbuli, Mr. Jesse, Mr. Uh, Zivai as well, and Queen Amalia. Thank you. I'm looking forward to the Zoom link. I would love to be there as well. Thank you so much. Have a beautiful week ahead. Uh, Pilot sends a message back to the Department of Genie Creators. They are here like always, the crazy ones. Leader Entity replies. Ignore them. Pilot carrying fallen spirits speaks to his team back in the lower astral world. Well, well, I see delivery here. The traders have a drop. Pilot gets an order from his superiors in the lower astral world. Stay close to them. We might get an opportunity. Noted, sir. Spiritual engine carrying Elizabeth's spirit crosses the satellite balloons in the Earth's atmosphere. Pilot carrying Elizabeth's spirit speaks to his team. The moon is available for natural GPS, but they use balloons to attach their spy cameras that they call satellites within the Earth's atmosphere. And yet they tell their people on Earth that the satellites are out of space. One member of the pilot's team replies, Well, that's why NASA is a 40 billion industry, paid to maintain the Matrix, a fabricated reality. I actually enjoyed that movie. I would have enjoyed more if Will Smith played the role of Neo. Gentlemen, focus. Pilot replies, Sorry, sir. Tracking location of Mrs. Miriam. She's by her garden behind the house with Helen. On it. There is a race of spiritual engines towards Mrs. Miriam's backyard. Bon anime, 